I mean, what even is that? Tamara Narasaki is maybe the best competition climber alive today, and it's easy to see why. Since he started competing in 2013, he's carved a niche for himself as a highly explosive, super futuristic boulder. This style has propelled Tomoa to the top of the IFSC rankings and helped him become one of the favorites heading into Tokyo 2021. However, in doing so, Tomoa has developed a habit that might just end up costing him the gold medal. Now, it's not that much of a stretch to say that lead climbing is probably Tomoa's weakest discipline. He's an incredible boulder, and with shockingly little training, he's been able to turn himself into a really good speed climber as well, clocking times that are barely a second off the fastest in the world. In a field that's filled with traditionalists whose speed climbing abilities leave just a tad bit to be desired, this already gives Tomoa a massive leg up when it comes to the combined formatting that the Olympic competitions will have. Lead climbing, though, remains a bit of an issue. Although I've seen Tomoa make some impressive improvements in this area, something about his style still leaves a lot to be desired, and unless he fixes this issue, I don't see him being able to hang with the likes of Schubert, Andra, and Migos. So what is this issue? Well, it's actually the very thing that has made Tomoa so famous, his strength and explosiveness. Tomoa often uses his strength when lead climbing to skip holds, cut his feet, and break beta. He prefers to move through a section quickly rather than efficiently. If you don't believe me, check out some clips of him climbing. This is in the Hachioji League Finals. On literally the second move of the route, Tomoa skips an intermediary hold and cuts his feet loose. Everyone else performed the move statically. Barely 20 seconds later, same route. He jumps to his hold, cuts his feet, and then decides to match his hands before getting a foothold on. Again, this isn't a difficult move for Tomoa, but he uses way more energy than necessary. Finally, here's him doing a massive cut loose, fairly high on the wall at the Innsbruck Combined Finals. Now, I know it might just seem like I'm cherry picking moments that show Tomoa using too much energy. When you watch him climb though, he moves like this all the time. Look at this sequence. Tomoa doesn't cut loose, but you can see the aggressiveness of his movement. He pulls himself up the wall and then lands heavily on each handhold, relying on his strength to latch it. You can compare this to someone like Adam Andra, who seems to flow through these sections. Even Alex Migos, who's got a more similar height and build to Tomoa, is able to do these sequences without needing those same super powerful, kind of herky-jerky moves. Now, at some level, this works for Tomoa. As a bouldering specialist, he simply doesn't have the endurance to climb slowly and steadily and find the exact beta for every sequence. You can see how it makes sense for him to power through these sections and trade off efficiency for speed. However, climbing efficiently doesn't always have to equate to climbing slowly. In my last video, I talked about how Adam Andra uses his route reading and accuracy to climb quickly and save his energy for the cruxes. Tomoa also climbs quickly, but he does so in the opposite way. Instead of taking the time to read a sequence, he picks the simplest path between two holds, which is often a dyno or an aggressive dynamic move, and he just does that. That habit, that tendency towards powering through sequences, is one of the things that defines Tomoa as a climber. It's one of his greatest strengths while bouldering, and it's allowed him to create new beta breaks on speed routes. For lead though, it's a fatal flaw, and one that might end up costing him the gold medal. His inability to climb accurately and keep his endurance for the upper part of the route means that he usually comes off just a few holds below the best climbers in the pack, with some of the greatest lead climbers ever competing against him in Tokyo, coming fourth or fifth in this discipline because of his inability to conserve energy could really harm Tomoa's chances at taking the gold medal. Unfortunately for Tomoa, this isn't an issue that's as simple as doing more endurance training. It's not that he doesn't have enough stamina, it's that he uses too much of his stamina on every move. To understand what I mean, Imagine that Tomoa and Adam are climbing next to each other and they each have an arbitrary endurance of 100. Just say that's the number. With each move that Adam makes, he uses up 2% of this endurance. For each move that Tomoa makes, he uses up 5%. Even if Tomoa gets to the same level of endurance that Adam has, 
he won't climb to the same height on the route because he uses up too much power on each individual move. He does this because he's used to the bouldering world where he only needs two or three powerful sequences to top a route, and jumping around like he does often helps him claim tops before other climbers. On a lead wall with 40 holds though, it's a major obstacle and it burns his forearms out way more quickly than it should. Instead, if Tomoa wants to fix this, he needs to change the way that he climbs. He needs to learn to flow through sequences instead of punching his way up them. This can be fixed through the accuracy of his hand placements, better route rating ability, and more precise footwork. Unless Tomoa nails all of this down, I don't see him getting to the level of lead climbing that might be necessary to secure him a win in Tokyo in 2020. Alright guys, that's everything I have. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe. If you want to learn more about how you can improve your efficiency while climbing, I would check out my last video that I posted or check out some of the other stuff that I've worked on if you happen to like it. Thank you again and I will see you next time.